It's been a while since I released my Auto IK Rigger add-on. Although the next course of action is to release updates for it, I decided to go into a different direction. My goal for the Auto IK Rigger add-on was to make rigging models with pre-existing armatures easy for people new to Blender or SFM users making the switch to it. And I wanted to work on another add-on that will do this as well. So, the next big add-on I'm proud to announce is my Face Rigger add-on, and today, I want to share with you how to use it. If you're already familiar with knowing what's a face rig and why it's a preferred way to animate a face, you can skip to the following timestamp. So what's a face rig? A face rig is a specialized controller that allows you to activate certain poses for your character's face. Things like where your character is looking, the character's eyebrow, to even your character's smiling and frowning can be controlled with a face rig. If you say, well duh, I animate using shape keys or face bones, why do I need a face rig? For face bones, some models have a lot of them. I mean, technically, you can animate using face bones, and sometimes you'll need to. But it can be very difficult finding the bone you're looking for in a sea of bones. For shape keys, you could animate using them. However, animations from shape keys can sometimes not transfer over. In fact, for my It Came From The Stream animation from last year, I had to redo Noir's lip sync animation since I had to change her model and I did her lip syncing using shape keys. Not to mention, it'll require you going through the shape keys panel of your mesh and scrolling through a lot of shape keys to find the one you're looking for. A face rig will allow you to pose or animate your character's face in an intuitive way. However, creating a face where it can be a time consuming process. Prior to this add on, it can take me a day to create a rig for my character's face. Now it takes me at most 20 30 minutes using this add on. With that out of the way, I'm going to show you how to use the face rigger add on. Before you do anything, make sure the armature and the meshes for your model have the transforms applied. So make sure all the axes on your location rotation is zero. If you use criterion rotation, then make sure the W axis is one. And finally for the scale, make sure all the axes are one. If they're not, then hit apply for their respective transforms. When you hit this button, three objects here pop up. The first is the main face rigger. This controls your eyes, eyebrows, upper and lower eyelids, and the lip corners of your model. The phony table controls your lip poses of your model. Typically these lip poses are A, O, T, N, B, M, and F, V. Depending on user demand, I plan on expanding the amount of options for these tables, including tongue controls. Finally, you're given a spherical bone. I won't go into detail for this one since it's more for the face bones part of the add-on. Now, position your tables to where you want them and scale them to your desired size. Do not apply any transforms for these tables. It will not work. Now go into your object data tab and look for a face rigger. Use the eyedropper tool to select your face mesh that has your shape keys. If you have different objects with different shape keys, it's highly recommended to merge them into one mesh. With that out of the way, select the bone you want the tables to lock to. This will make the tables inherit the position and rotation of your model, so you won't lose them when you move the model around. Now select use shape keys. Okay, so this add-on has the ability to pre-fill certain fields like the Auto IK add-on. You can get the list of recognized naming conventions for specific shape keys in the documentation of the face rigger. If there are any shape keys that you don't have or you don't want them to be included for the add-on, just leave it blank. Another field I highly recommend filling out is a bone layer for the face rigger and thumbnail tables. Once you're satisfied with the setting, select the mesh that has your shape keys and hit run on the add-on. And you're done. The shape keys version of the add-on is recommended for adding a face rig to SSFM or MD models. Okay, let's talk about the face bones version. Not gonna lie, you have to pay close attention to what you're doing for this step. If you're not careful, then your face rig will not work. So, like the shape keys version, make sure your mesh and armature have the transforms applied, loading in the tables, yada yada yada, etc, etc, etc. However, this is where the similarities between the two end. Before going further, I want to show you a neat feature designed to make it easier to work with face bones. Let's say you have a shit ton of face bones and it's very difficult to see what you're doing with them. 
Then you can run the refactor operator. In pose mode, run the operator, select your head bone, the bone layer you want all your face bones to be moved to, and the new scale for the face bones if you think the face bones are too big or too small. Hit run and go to the bone layer with the face bones. They should be much easier to pose. With that out of the way, we're going to create several actions for the face bones that the add-on will use. To do this, pull up your dope sheet and select the action editor. Before we go any further, I want to mention this. Your model's face bones have to have a symmetric naming convention. For example, this Goku Black model uses underscore L and underscore R for the left and right face bones. Please make sure the face bones for your model uses underscore L or R or has the words left or right in the middle of your face bones names with one space in between them. Although the documentation has a list of name conventions that add on recognizes, the two cases I mentioned are the most reliable. I'm going to show you how to create actions for the eyes and one for one of the sliders. If you know how to create actions for one of them, then you should be able to create actions for the rest of them. If you still don't know what to do, then please read the documentation. To create a new action, hit new on the action adder and to the name of the action you're creating. Since we're creating an action for the character looking left and right, I named it eyes left right. Now select the eye bones you only want to control. If the model's face bones have a symmetric naming convention like I said earlier, then you can use a mirror select on the other eye bone. Even though I didn't do it in this example, you should hide all but the bones you're animating with. This prevents any unwanted bones from appearing in the action. If you haven't done this already, create three key frames in the action. Going left to right, the first keyframe is when the character is looking left, the middle keyframe is when he's looking forward, and the last keyframe should be when he's looking right. After creating them, pose the character's eyes to the positions I mentioned. Once you're done, hit the shield icon and the X button. The shield icon makes sure the action doesn't disappear when you reload the file, and the X just closes the action so we can create a new one. Now we can create an action for the eyes looking down and up. Create a new action and give it an appropriate name. Create three keyframes and position the eyes when the model is looking down, looking forward, and looking up. Hit the shield icon and X when you're done. For this step, we're going to create an action for when the model is blinking and when it's wide-eyed. Unfortunately for this Goku Black model, you can't really see the wide-eyed part because of the eyebrows, but you'll get the point. Create a new action and select the eyelid bones you only want to control and hide the rest. First key frame is when the eyelids are down, second is when they're neutral, third is when they're up. Hit shield and X again. Using the same steps for blinking, create actions for the lower eyelid bones and the main eyebrow bones. For the lip bones, create the frown and smile action like you would for the eyes looking down and up. And for the lips stretch and pucker, like you're creating the eyes left and right action. If you have no idea how these actions should look, refer to the documentation. Please note all these actions must be made for the face rigger to work. Finally, the felonies. Creating actions for the felonies is pretty straightforward. For each felony action, the first frame must be the lips as neutral position, and the second key frame should be the desired lip pose. Unlike the other poses, you don't need to fill all the felonies for the face rigger. Once you're done creating the actions, go to your object data tab and look for the face rigger. Select whatever mesh of the face, select the bone that the tables will be locked to, and then hit the face bone selection. Fill in the corresponding actions in the drop down box, select your armature and hit run. Now your face should be rigged. The best part is that you're able to still move your model's regular face bones if you need to further exaggerate certain actions. And that's pretty much the add-on. I really hope this helps Bonner newcomers with getting a fairly basic face rig set up for their models. I plan to update this add-on after I finish updating the Auto IK Rigger, which is going to be my major focus for the coming months. If you run into any issues I did not cover in the documentation or in this tutorial video, my email is included in the documentation. With that said, thanks for watching and for the support. I honestly appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful day and night. See ya!